Welcome everyone to another DE Hammer video. In today's video, we're going to go over how to build your own touchscreen controller for your gerbil based CNC machine. And we will be doing it with a Raspberry Pi 4, CNC JS for the control software, and a 12.3 inch Raspberry Pi touchscreen that I got on Amazon. Now I spent the past two weeks going over different variations of putting this all together and it was an interesting time. So I've gone ahead and boiled all that down to four basic steps. The first being flash the OS, the second being basic Pi configuration, three installing CNC JS, and four hooking it all up. Now this method worked as of April, 2021, and there is a written walkthrough you can follow along with on my portfolio page in the link below, along with a parts list and a diagram of all the USB and HDMI connections. And if you want to see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and click the bell to get the notification for new videos. Also, if you really want to follow along with projects as I get them ready for a video, check out my Instagram page. All right, now that I am done with the ever so shameless self promotion, let's get into it. So let's look at why I did this. I really love the workflow with my 3018 Prover because it was easy to use, small, got the job done, and I could run it with the offline controller. No need to keep my laptop out in the, out in the dusty garage. Now that I got a long mill from CNC Labs, I needed a way to control the machine as it does not come with an offline controller. Cool thing will be is I could also use this setup on my 3018 Prober because it as well is Gerbil based. So for hardware, there are a couple ways we can go about this. First, we can set it up with a touch screen as we're going to go over. We could set it up as headless so you could control it from another device, say your phone or tablet. Or we could ditch the touch screen and just set it up with an old monitor, a mouse and a keyboard as a way to recycle old hardware or just save some money. Just remember, you can start off low and add on later. On the software side, what makes CNC JS nice is that it is built so it runs in a browser, but not off the internet, just your home network. So let's say you lose connection to the internet for any reason, except for your main router dying, you will still be able to access your system. I live in an area where the internet connection goes out for a day or two, and that is why I just hate software that requires you have to have access to the internet. I do want to point out that CNCJS is just controller software, so you will still need CAD and CAM software to make your designs and G code. Hopefully, this answered the why part. Now, let's get to the how part. All right, to start our build, the first thing we will do is format our boot drive. In this case, it's a 16 gig micro USB card. And to do that, we're gonna come over here to our removable disk E, right click and go to format. Now, sometimes you can have issues when formatting a large format card uh, through Windows. I've had some issues uh, here and there with this 14.8, so you can also use something like SD card formatter, or you can use the Raspberry Pi imager and flash it there as well. To get the imager, you can go to raspberrypi.org slash software, and you can download the Raspberry Pi OS using Raspberry Pi imager. Just select which OS you're using, in my case, Windows, so, I've downloaded that, and you'll download, install it, and this will come up. To choose the operating system, you click there. At the top here, you're gonna have the Raspberry Pi OS, uh, which was formerly Raspbian, I believe. They've just recently changed over to that naming. You can also come down to the Raspberry Pi OS here, and this will give you two options. You can go with the light version, and that will give you no GUI interface, or you can go with the desktop version, the GUI version, and I'm gonna go with the GUI version or the desktop version because I suck at networking and I could never get the uh, static IP to work with the light version for some 
reason. I don't know what it was. So I said, screw it. We'll go with the desktop. That way I can just take in my USB. I don't have to mess with the internet and I can just drag and drop my files on there. So we're gonna go with the Raspberry Pi OS full 32 bit here. We're gonna choose our storage and it is mounted as E. And then we're gonna click right. And yes, I'm sure I want to write over that. All right, so while this is writing, I'm gonna take a break and we'll get back to this as soon as this is done writing. All right, now that we have the disk all flashed up, I suggest you get in a comfy place uh, around your computer instead of setting this all up in your workshop. That way you can plug in, use the ethernet to connect instead of relying on the Wi-Fi for all this updates because this can take a while. And then also there's a, gonna be a fair amount of typing. So it's just nice to be comfy at your desk when you're doing this. Since we are using the GUI or the desktop version, it has a walkthrough when you first boot it on like you're seeing here. But if you are using the light version, you can do all of this through command prompt with the update, upgrade, all that fun stuff. But we're gonna be focusing on the desktop version. So let's go ahead and click next to get started. I am not United Kingdom, United States, American English. We are, we'll put Chicago time, good enough for me. And English language, use US keyboard. Next. And it's going to go and set the location for your Raspberry Pi. So we'll wait for this. Now it's going to let you enter a new password. And just going to make it simple here. Okay. It is not showing the black uh, border around your desktop. So sometimes when you load these in, you'll see a black border around the edges here. Um, if it is, just click that and it'll expand it out all the way. All right, so we'll go next since we don't have a black border. Now it's looking for our Wi-Fi. Okay, and this is where it'll take a little bit, but we're just gonna go hit next and let it do its things. So we could get into the weeds of weeds in this of how to set this up for running headless and setting up that connection, but we're just gonna keep our focus on transferring RG code files via USB hub on the Pi. Uh, there is a lot of cool things you can do with this. Uh, headlessly, you can use your phone or tablet to remote in or your work computer and go in through that way. Uh, there are plenty of good tutorials on how to do that. So I, I'll leave links to those down below as well. But uh, let's uh, let this do its thing. And when we come back, uh, we'll, we will have rebooted and start getting ready to and start getting ready to install CNC JS. Now that our Pi has updated and upgraded, we need to install Build Essentials and Git, Useful Tools, and after both of those, Node.js. So let's open the command line prompt and type in sudo apt git install dash y build essentials git. Now there are spaces in there. We'll hit enter. Next, um, we are going to do sudo, sudo apt git install htop iotop in mon lsof screen dash y, and we'll hit enter on that. And let that load. Next, we will install the latest Node.js with sudo, with sudo apt git install dash y node js. All right, now we have, with all that loaded, we can go ahead and install CNC JS. First, we need to type in this, it's rather long, so I'm not gonna spell that one out, and press enter. Then to load it, we will enter curl dash lowercase s, uppercase s, uppercase l, dollar signs, bracket URL in slash uh, not slash line bash. And this gets us into the CNC JS installation. First, we will press enter on the splash screen, and that takes us into what we want to load for CNC JS. 
Here, we will make sure that the web kiosk is selected. And that is going to be A07, so use your arrows to go down to that and then hit space to select. Now, if you want to set up uh, a webcam streamer and all those later, you can select A08, A09 right now. And also, if you select A10, it will automatically reboot once uh, this is all set up. Now, we'll hit tab to go down into OK and press Enter to proceed. Here are the pendants. Uh, you can take a quick look and uh, read over that, but we're gonna select these all with the arrows and then space to select and then press Enter for OK. Now we're getting into it loading. Uh, don't walk away, there's gonna be a couple pop-up screens where you're gonna need to select some stuff. So let's wait for the first pop-up screen. So the first pop-up screen is going to ask uh, which version of CNC.js you want to install. In this, we're going to be using 1.9.22, and we'll hit Tab to get down to OK, and then press Enter to continue the installation. Next up, it will ask for the URL to use when, if you wanted to use this headless or remote in. I just leave it as is one they provide there. But again, I'm not a real big into networking, so this is not one of my strong suits, but you can go ahead and just hit OK. Just make a note of HTTP colon forward slash forward slash local host colon 8000. So you can type that into your web browser from another computer and log in to your uh, CNC.js. And now that it is finished, we're gonna unhook this here and we're gonna go get it hooked up on the long mill so we can show off what this thing can do. Before we jump into that, let's uh, go over the wiring setup for this because if you're using a touchscreen, that is gonna eat up two of your USB ports. That leaves you with two ports and if you wanna use a USB flash drive to transfer files over, you will need to use something like this, the Logitech keyboard slash track board combo or you can only use a mouse and no keyboard or a keyboard but no mouse. Just food for thought when you're building yours. In this one, we're going to be using a USB so we can bring in our file and just drag and drop. So before CNC.js fires up, it has a splash screen with how to exit it and get back to the main desktop, which is Control, Alt, Backspace. Just note that if you do this, it will restart CNC.js. If you want con constant access to your desktop, just open the web browser and CNC.js will load up in there, still giving you access to your desktop. Now, I'm not going to go into any great depth on how to use CNC.js in this video, but if you're interested in that, let me know down in the comments below. But if you connect to our CNC machine, we first need to select a port, then connect there with open, then upload the G code and cut away. While it may take a while to get this all set up and going. What takes the most time is waiting for things to install or update. Now, yes, we could just go purchase a con offline controller or a computer, but there's just something fun about using a Raspberry Pi. Just like there is something about the TNG through Enterprise years of Star Trek. So I thought it would be fitting to showcase my latest piece, my Star Trek Elcar's Edgelet. It was my first major cut using this, and using CNC.js with the touchscreen was just a blast and ease to use. This piece took over 12 hours to engrave and just 12 minutes to cut. I used my 90 degree spring loaded drag bit for the detail and a 3 millimeter 3 flute to cut. So that wraps it up for this video. If you want to see more builds and videos like this, remember to subscribe and ring the bell. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I will post sneak peeks of the projects I am working on, and if you have any questions, leave them down below. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep making stuff.